I believe that Obama has bought had bought time for the US dollar. And the time is now up. Whether it was Obama or it was Romney, time for the US dollar is up. And so the immediate future is one in which we should not only be looking carefully at signs of a military attack on Iran, on Pakistan, on Syria, but in addition to that, that we monitor very carefully uh, the likelihood of a monetary collapse um, that will bring the monetary system to an end and have it replaced with a new monetary system. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Mahathir, the former Prime Minister of Malaysia, recently wrote a piece on his blog. I don't know why it's called a blog. Where did that word come from, blog? I, I have no idea. Yeah. On uh, the subject of quantitative easing. Quantitative easing. QE. There was QE1, QE2, QE3. And he <laughs> explained in his simple language with his tongue in his cheek that you no longer have to print paper money. It's a cumbersome process to print seven trillion dollars. What a lot of paper, what a lot of ink, printing presses and then the armored car cars and the security guards to transport all of that. You're printing paper and making money, which is bogus, which is fraudulent, but also cumbersome. And what they're doing now, he says, the Western world is taking the rest of mankind for a ride, for the last ride, really, monetary ride. But in 2008, coming up to now, to 2012, they stage all of this monetary fiction about banking system being in crisis, with stories stranger than the story of the cattle, the cow that jumped over the moon, so that the Federal Reserve could just write a check. That's all. You just write a check for the seven trillion. You don't have to print the paper anymore and have that sent to the banks. When it reaches the banks, it is still not yet money. No. It is when the banks lend that and people borrow it and there's a legal contract to return, then it becomes money, part of the monetary system. And so what the US government did in handing over huge sums of money to the banking system in QE1, QE2, and now QE3 around the corner was massively fraudulent and bogus. And it is in the nature of the world created by Almighty God. The lies cannot uh, lies cannot remain forever. That that which is false cannot exist forever. Must one day collapse. And we are now on the verge of that collapse. There's no way under the sun that the US dollar can survive. It's gone. It's finished. We're just waiting for the moment. And that moment could now come after the elections when some act of terrorism or war takes place. Like an Israeli first strike on Iran. The use of tactical nuclear weapon. 
and uh, Wall Street will then take over. And that's the end of the US dollar. The sad thing that I have to share with you, Maurice, is that my critics are so fierce in criticizing me and using the basis language that they can find against me, plastering it on the internet and proclaiming themselves to be the most pious and the most rightly guided Muslims. <laughs> and yet their scholarship, that Islamic scholarship out there, up to this day cannot recognize the monetary system of paper, plastic and electronic money to be bogus and fraudulent and haram and to be a carefully constructed vehicle of exploitation and oppression and enslavement of the masses. I don't know what else I can do. I've been working in the field for so long to try to teach and to explain my Muslim people, the scholars of Islam. But I fail. I have failed. We have a conference coming up on the 26th and 27th of November. And I was hoping that you would be able to attend it um, on Riba. Uh, usury, borrowing and lending on interest. And in that conference, we're going to be spending a lot of time on silver. But maybe silver has a more important role to play at this time in monetary history than gold. But without the support of the scholars of Islam, we're just whistling in the wind. So yes, I want to share with you my view that we are on the verge of the collapse of the monetary system. Now the elections are over. And I also sorrowfully so that the world of Islam is unprepared to respond appropriately. So some, as an observer, the world of Islam is not uh, well balanced at this time. Uh, it's the same with the West. Um, you, you mentioned Dr. Mohammed Matir, and uh, there was an Asian crisis similar to what just happened to Iran, where the currencies crashed many years ago when he was in power. And he, he refused the IMF loan. That's right. He was the only country to do so in Asia. And uh, it worked. It, it survived very well, Malaysia. What is interesting, Dr. Mahat, um, what is interesting, Maris, is that he had a minister of finance named Anwar Ibrahim, who had been recognized as the great Islamic hope. He was a very vibrant Muslim youth leader in the country as a young man been nurtured to grow, to represent Islam as an Islamic leader. And he was finance minister. And he, he appeared to be more of a blue-eyed boy of the IMF. Whereas Dr. Muhammad Mahathir, who was secular, secular nationalist, never grew a beard and put on a hat and appeared to be an Islamic scholar. No. Dr. Mahathir consistently, consistently demonstrated a superior understanding of the gravity of the monetary problem and the dangers posed by the IMF. And it is Dr. Mahathir now who is claiming that the Western world is taking the rest of the world for a ride with the QE, the quantitative easing. Do you just write a check? for seven trillion dollars and send it to the banks and the, re the rest of the world is saying nothing about it and doing nothing about it and the scholars of Islam and the leaders of Islam would not stand up and say this simple thing that this money that we are using is bogus, it's fraudulent, it's haram, we should return to dinar and dirham. That's, that's all that they have to do and they can't do it. They can't do it. No, nobody can refute the system, not even people like Russia or China, who you would expect have the strength to do so. 
nobody is able to reject this this laissez-faire capitalism this free trade whatever you want to call it globalization oh we are a people maris who insist on the establishment and the preservation of an absolutely free and fair market absolutely free and fair market islam a man came to the prophet allah blessings be upon him and said o oh, messenger of allah prices are too high please impose price control the prophet said no the man came back a second and a third time pleading the prophet said no he said but we can raise our hands and pray to allah and he can bring down prices when prices are high the farmer benefits when prices are low the consumer benefits so one day for me and one day for you you don't stop buying because the prices are high because now that the prices are high he is going to benefit who is producing the food this is the extent to which we value a free and a fair market our market is one which does not discriminate between the muslim and the non-muslim all come into the market as equals and if a jew in our market is selling at a better price demonstrates greater integrity and delivers superior quality of goods we buy from the jew in preference to our muslim brother because there is no brotherhood in trade trade must be free even when war takes place we do not use trade as a weapon of war economic sanctions is something filthy in islamic ethics trade war is something filthy in islamic business ethics you are allowed to trade with the enemy while war is in place going on on the condition that you do not trade in weapons of war trade is supposed to benefit mutual mutually all parties involved in trade so we are a people who insist upon establishing and maintaining a free and a fair market but that's not a fair market where money is corrupted and paper becomes money bogus and fraudulent and so we are asking to return to integrity of money that money must have integrity money must have intrinsic value and if only we could get the scholars of islam to wake up for the massive fraud is taking place but they hurl all kind of slander against me they use vicious language against me they call me all kinds of names and their scholars have eyes and cannot see have ears and cannot hear have hearts and yet do not understand they are worse than cattle that's the state of the world of islam today none of us can get along i'm you know um in the sanctions you mentioned there's economic sanctions being imposed on on syria now it's a good example and now there's a humanitarian crisis i mean the sanctions actually hurt the poor people and they're in used iraq? To, in iraq in iraq the world knows about it the people who are administering the sanctions they themselves knew it and they talk spoke about it but that did not affect the bloodthirsty zionists who only after the blood of the people it is it is something shameful it is disgraceful to use trade as a weapon islam the religion 
will never disgrace itself the way modern Western civilization has disgraced itself in using trade as a weapon and in imposing economic sanctions. They are a absolutely shameless people with no morals at all who could impose economic sanctions. Absolutely. Well, I'm a very satisfied man. I've had a very good education here. <laughs> I'm not sure where to go, where to take it farther, though. Well, I think we've had enough for tonight. Yes. I thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.